Okay, here we go with lesson 27 on page 213. In this lesson, we begin our work with algebraic fractions or rational expressions, including simplifying them, multiplying them, and dividing them. So the good news for some of you, if you really didn't like the parabolas and all the quadratic stuff we were doing, is that this is a brand new topic, almost completely unrelated. The bad news for some of you is that we are still gonna need to factor things that look like x squared plus five x plus four, and x squared plus 6x plus 8. So lots of 2 by 2 box factoring, and maybe difference of squares factoring, and greatest common factor factoring, OK? Aside from all the factoring techniques, we're completely leaving parabolas and quadratics behind. All right, brand new topic all about fractions. OK, here are some examples of things that we call algebraic fractions, 5 over x squared, x over x plus 2, and then this guy. What makes these algebraic fractions and not just ordinary fractions is that they have variables instead of in them instead of just numbers, instead of just constants, okay? So an algebraic fraction is just a fraction with variables. Okay, we can evaluate, simplify, and perform operations with algebraic fractions just like we do with ordinary fractions in arithmetic. So we're going to start by doing arithmetic stuff, and then uh, hopefully we're comfortable with the arithmetic version, and then we'll make things more complicated by throwing some x's into the problem. So uh, oftentimes we're asked to simplify or reduce a fraction to lowest terms. Here's one, 24 over 54. Now I'm going to reduce this in kind of super slow motion, but it's going someplace good, so just bear with me. What's the greatest common factor? What number goes into both 24 and 54? 6 goes in, right? 2 goes in, but we can do even better. We want the biggest thing. Uh, 8 goes into the top, but 8 doesn't go into 54. Um, so I think 6 is the best that we can do. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to change 24 into 6 times something. In this case, it's 6 times 4. And we're going to change 54 into 6 times something. It's 6 times 9, yes? Now at this stage, you are perfectly within your rights to just cancel the 6s, but I said I'm going in slow motion, so here it is. Um, you guys know that if we wanted to multiply fractions, how would we do it? Straight across. So you guys buy that this highlighted thing is really just 6 times 4 on top and 6 times 9 on the bottom. But look, that's exactly what we had. We have like no practice going in this direction. It's a funny thing to write, but at least it's legal, right? I mean, they're definitely equal to each other. And as soon as you have 6 over 6, you can say, oh, that's really just the number. 6 over 6 is really just the number 1. And so we're just going to change that 6 over 6 into the number 1. And then 1 times 4 ninths is just 4 ninths. I said this was a long way to go, and we would have been perfectly within our rights to just cancel the 6s right there, and there's the answer, right? It's just 4 over 9. But I just want to highlight something we're going to see a bunch this semester, and that is something that looks like that. 6 over 6 is just a fancy form of 1. We're going to see lots of fancy forms of 1. We're going to abbreviate it FFOO, but we're going to say that as foo-foo. Foo-foo, fancy form of 1, okay? So let's take a look at number 4. It says, are we allowed to cancel the 2s in each of these fractions? We got So there's just 13 and 2 on top and 2 and 3 on the bottom in all of these problems. First one is multiplication, then addition, then subtraction. So uh, let's decide whether or not we cancel the twos in each case. Okay, the right answer to this problem is definitely 26 over 6. Agree? Just multiply. And then we can reduce. What number goes into both? 2 goes into both. So what do you get when you get rid of the 2 in each one? 13 on top and 3 on the bottom. So if we had canceled the twos, would we have gotten the right answer? Yes. So canceling the twos there, perfectly legitimate. In fact, that is exactly the same kind of thing that happened with the sixes in the previous problem, right? Two over two is really just a, say the made up word, foo-foo. Everybody say the made up word. It's fun. Foo-foo. Right. See how fun? <laughs> so two over two is a foo-foo. We can cancel it there. But take a look. I mean, it, it looks kind of similar in parts B and C. I see a 2 over 2 right here. I'm tempted to just cancel them. I see again a 2 over 2 there. I'm tempted to cancel them. Let's see if we can. Okay, the right answer to part B is definitely what on top? 15. On the bottom? 5. That reduces to 3. 3 is definitely the right answer. If we decide that we are allowed to cancel the 2s, what do we get? 
13 over 3, is that the right answer? No. Does that mean we're allowed to cancel the twos? You cannot cancel the twos. There is a fundamental difference between problem A and problem B. You can cancel when you have multiplication. You cannot cancel when you have addition. It is going to be very tempting to cancel those twos, although it won't be so obvious. It won't just be numbers. It'll be something like uh, one of these problems up above here. Uh, x squared right here. Take a look at this last example. X squared and X squared. Look, they're just lined up begging to be canceled. Can you do it? No, because it's addition, right? We've discovered we can cancel when it's multiplication. But you cannot cancel when it's addition. As soon as I see X squared plus, I say, okay, I cannot do anything, no matter how tempting it is. Okay, last example down here is part C. 13 minus 2 over 2 minus 3. The right answer is definitely what on top? 11 over negative 1, which is really just negative 11. That is the correct answer, no question. If we cancel the 2s, cross off the 2, what do we get? 13 over 3, maybe, I, I, don't, I don't know what you get. I mean, you just can't do it, right? It, the that doesn't give us negative 11, no matter what you do to those things. So, are you allowed to cancel in subtraction? No. Are you allowed to cancel addition? No. Are you allowed to cancel multiplication? Yes. That is the point of this example. You can only cancel when you have multiplication. Here it is. Based on the examples above, we should see that we can only cancel when we have multiplication. We cannot cancel when the main operation is addition or subtraction. So here's our basic idea with foo-foos. To simplify or reduce an algebraic fraction, we look for common factors. That word factor implies that there is multiplication, right? That is the word, the word factor means you have multiplication. We're looking for factors in the numerator and denominator that are exactly the same and that can be canceled. For example, in part A, the factor is two and the factor is two and we cancel them because they're the same. So let's come down here to part A x squared minus 9 over x squared plus 6x plus 9. Can we cancel the x squareds? No. Can we cancel the 9s? No. How about uh, one of these x's with this x right here? No. Because this is not multiplication. The only way you can cancel is when you have multiplication. So here's the question, big question that we're going to ask repeatedly. Are the numerator and denominator in factored form? Is the top factored? No, it's a subtraction. Is the bottom factored? No, it's additions. If the answer is no, it's not factored, then you cannot reduce until it is factored. So step one for us is always going to be factor numerator and denominator completely. Let's give this a shot. Factoring x squared minus 9. That is a special difference of two squares formula. Yeah? x squared is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square, <clears throat> two parentheses. The first terms have to give me x squared, and they need to be the same. What are they? x and x. The last terms need to give me a 9, but they also have to be the same. 3 and 3, that's why they had to be squares. What about the signs? 1 plus 1 minus. That was our difference of two squares formula. Now this thing on the bottom, I'm just going to say 2 by 2 box, just to save a little bit of time, because some of you guys are really quick at the box. Some people need to take a little more time with the box. That's all fine, but I just want to, I'm just going to put the answer. I trust that you can each in your own time get to the answer by using the box. So here's the answer to the factoring of the bottom, x plus 3, x plus 3. Okay, I'm omitting details, but you can do it in your own time. The top is now in factored form. The bottom is also factored form. What is the operation between these parentheses? Multiplication, that is fantastic because that is the only thing that I can deal with. I can cancel when things are in factored form because then it's multiplication. So what do you see that's exactly the same on top and bottom? X plus three. Cancel x plus 3 with either one on the bottom. doesn't matter which one. And those two things right there that we canceled, what's our fancy word for that? 
foo foo that is a foo foo x plus three over x plus three is really equal to one which is why we don't need to write it because one times doesn't change anything and so our final answer to this problem is x minus three over x plus three we don't need the parentheses anymore because there's nothing else left it might be tempting to cancel the x's can we do it no it could be tempting to cancel the threes can we do that no, so it's not enough just to know how to cancel correctly. You also need to avoid the temptation of canceling when you can't, which is almost all the time. Um, okay, so this is our answer. That is all well and good. Uh, there was one more thing I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Uh, why is it that I can cancel here? That looks like addition to me. And we said we cannot cancel when it's addition. We can only cancel when it's multiplication. A parentheses. Rich, what were you going to say? Yeah, we've got parentheses. And so it's true the stuff inside the parentheses has addition, which means you can't go in and individually inside of parentheses cancel the terms. So for example, I'm not allowed to go in here and cancel those threes because you can't go in because in is where there's addition and subtraction. That's a problem. But if we look more broadly, more globally, we can just say, okay, there's multiplication. That's the fundamental thing happening here. And this stuff in the parentheses is an exact copy of the stuff down below in the parentheses. So we can cancel entire things, even if they have addition and subtraction, but you cannot cancel individual things with addition and subtraction. All right, moving on to the next page. 3x plus 12 over 6x plus 24. Can we cancel 3 and 6? Can we cancel x and x? Can we cancel 12 and 24? No, so many things that are tempting to cancel. None of them is ready. So what do we need to do? We need to factor. Great question. Rich is pointing out that this is a multiplication and so is that, yes? But the fact is, if I go in and selectively grab this, I'm ignoring that it is part of an addition, right? 3x has a multiplication in it. And if that were the only thing upstairs, then 3 and x would both be cancelable. But they are firmly attached to that addition. And that addition means we cannot do anything. So big question, are numerator and denominator factored? Not yet. So we factor. What comes out of both? 3 comes out, leaving an x plus 4. Downstairs, what comes out of both? 6. Leaving x plus 4. What do you know? So top and bottom are now factored. And if you see copies of things that are exactly the same, you can cancel. So what can we cancel? x plus 4, the entire thing. Not just four, but the entire thing in the parentheses. It's all or nothing. X plus four is cancel. Uh, three and six, we can actually just reduce, right? Three and six becomes one and two. So our final answer here is half. Okay, moving down to part C. Two plus X over two. Can we cancel the twos? One of the twos actually is in cancel ready form. Which two is ready to be canceled if it could find a partner? Is the one on the bottom because that is just an individual two. If you really insist that it look like multiplication, okay, fine. Two times one. So the bottom is just multiplication, but the top we cannot do anything with. It's addition, right? It's no good. So we cannot cancel. So then we have to try to factor numerator and denominator. Can you factor two plus x? nothing to do, right? No two by two box, no difference of squares. There's no greatest common factor other than one. So we can't do anything with the top, or anything with the bottom either. So that is as simplified as it will be. Uh, let's see. So I know that we've been putting like cannot be simplified or irreducible or something like that. And, and I know that we use um, like acronyms, like CBS for cannot be simplified. So I've seen people using acronyms for already simplified stupid, which 
right? I'm not going to ask us to use. So just say simplified or cannot be simplified, anything like that, OK? All right. So we'll, we'll go back to our standard, cannot be simplified. OK, moving on to number seven. Let's consider the algebraic fraction, x minus 3 over 3 minus x. What is the value of this fraction when we evaluate it for the values x equals 10 and x equals negative 2? Let's give it a shot. So first one, x equals 10. Top becomes 10 minus 3 over 3 minus 10. <coughs> 7 over negative 7, which is negative 1. Let's try x equals negative 2. Upstairs, negative 2 minus 3. Downstairs, 3 minus negative 2. Negative 5 over 5, which is really negative 1. I plugged in 10, I got negative 1. I plugged in negative 2, I got negative 1. You can plug in any number you want, you're going to get negative 1. There's a very particular pattern that we see here that we're going to start to recognize as being, oh, that is just negative 1. x minus 3 over 3 minus x. The pattern is upstairs and downstairs are both subtracting two terms, and they're subtracting exactly the same two terms. What's the only difference? It is the order. Right? Upstairs is an x minus 3. Downstairs is not x minus 3. It's 3 minus x. And whenever we see that exact pattern, it's always equal to negative 1, just like that. So that is written down here. You might circle it or highlight it or something. a minus b over b minus a. Subtraction, two terms, a and b exactly the same, except the bottom is just the opposite order. <clears throat> okay, so let's see how this is going to come into play for us. Take a look at uh, 64 minus x squared over x squared minus 6x minus 16. Can we cancel anything in the current configuration? No, it's all addition and subtraction, even though 64 and 16 have a common factor. It's addition and subtraction. Nothing is cancelable yet. So we factor everything. Now this one's already written out, but 64 minus x squared is a difference of two squares, 8 plus x, 8 minus x. So that's written up on top. So that one's factored. Uh, the bottom guy, again, I'm omitting the 2 by 2 box, but you would do the 2 by 2 box, and you would get that factorization. So we're going to skip that detail. We're just going to look and see if we can cancel anything. Is there anything on top that's exactly the same as something on the bottom? No, there's nothing that's exactly the same. But there's something that kind of looks really close. I've circled it. 8 minus x and x minus 8. They're not exactly the same, but they are that pattern that we just described. Two terms, subtracted. The only change is, is the order, right? Upstairs is 8 minus x. Downstairs is x minus 8. So we cancel them, but you can't just cross them out because it's not a fancy form of 1. They cross off, and they're equal to negative 1. That's our highlighted or starred equation right here. So you cross them off, and then you say, OK, they become negative 1. And so that negative 1 is right there. And oftentimes, a negative 1 in the front, you just write as a single negative sign without the 1. All right? So brand new pattern we need to start looking for, a minus b over b minus a. Cross them off and replace with a negative sign. Questions on that? Okay, moving on. Uh, how about uh, this next example here? x plus 5, x minus 1 over x minus 7, 1 plus x. Already factored, so this is in a good form for us. Is there anything we can cancel? Anything exactly the same on top and bottom? Is anything exactly the same? No. So then maybe it's one of these, you know, same idea, A minus B over B minus A. Do we have that? How about these two guys right here? 
x minus 1, 1 plus x, same, but just the order. What's the problem? It's a plus. Our pattern is a minus on top and bottom. This is not that. This is nothing. It's tempting, but it's nothing. It's got to be both minuses, with the only difference being the order. You cannot do anything with this. This is as simplified as it can be, all right? Okay, so the last new thing for today has to do with multiplication and division. So let's take a look at a division problem, just numbers first, and then we'll throw some x's into it. Uh, 4 ninths divided by 2 27ths. What's our standard technique for changing that to something we can handle? First fraction, does it get changed or stay? First fraction stays. Division becomes multiplication. Second fraction flips, right? Remember this from way back when? Divide two fractions. So the four ninths gets copied. There it is. Division changes to multiplication. Second fraction flips over. 27 over 2 becomes 2 over 20. Uh, sorry, 2 over 27 becomes 27 over 2. All right. Uh, it is okay to just multiply straight across. After all, we know that's how we multiply fractions, but it is always in our best interest to look to cancel first. And in this case, we can cancel lots of stuff, right? 27 and 9 become 3, 4 and 2 become 2. So much better. Because otherwise you do 4 times 27, it's not terrible to do that, but there's no need. So in this case, just 2 times 3 or 6, everything on the bottom just become, becomes 1. Okay, so let's take a look at 11 together. <clears throat> so first problem is a multiplication. Um, I'm going to put this over 1 just so that we see everything as being fractions. Okay, is there any addition or subtraction in this problem? No, which means everything is multiplication and everything is cancel ready. Everything is cancelable at this exact moment. So we're just going to cancel stuff. 15 and 35. 5 goes into both. How many times? 3 upstairs. 7. Yes. Okay, now we're going to look at the x's. We have x to the ninth on top, x to the fourth on the bottom. We remember our basic shortcut for dealing with those exponents. Subtract them, right? We remember all these exponent rules. So it becomes 9 minus 4, which is just x to the fifth. So bottom disappears entirely, and the top becomes x to the fifth, subtracting those exponents. Same idea with the y's. You've got y cubed on top, y to the tenth on the bottom. Produce and get y to the seventh, where? On the bottom, right? We're being intelligent here and subtracting in the easy order. 10 minus 3 is easier than 3 minus 10, but you put the y's wherever there were more of them. So the y cubed on top goes away, y to the seventh downstairs. And so then our final answer here, just smushing together what's left, which isn't much. 3x to the fifth, 2 just becomes 6x to the fifth. It's just straight multiplication. And then downstairs, 7y to the seventh. Just one last note on this part A. Um, some students have in their heads that they can only cancel uh, in a single fraction. Like they don't like that we took y's from the first fraction and reduced them with y's in the second fraction. But the fact is, you multiply fractions straight across, right? And so totally fine to in your mind or just write down, it's just one big fraction, yeah? So there is no first fraction, second fraction separation. Any numerator with any denominator, totally fine. Okay, part B is a lot tougher. Um, because we need to change all of this stuff to multiplication. First thing I'm going to do, though, is what we did up here in number 10. Copy the first fraction, division becomes multiplication, flip the second fraction. So that's our first step. So copy the first fraction, division becomes times, flip the second fraction.
Okay, now it's multiplication. That's friendlier than division. And now we're going to do lots of um, factoring. So again, we're going to do this quick. Feel free to take your time on this later on. But this top guy on the left is a difference of two squared, two squares. So 2y and 2y gives us the 4y squared. How are we going to get that 1? One and one signs. One plus one minus. Sorry, right, there's a difference of squares. Downstairs, four minus y squared. Another difference of squares. Two plus y, two minus y. <coughs> okay, top right, different kind of factoring. We're going to factor out the greatest common factor. What is it? Y comes outside of parentheses. Y minus 2 is good. Bottom, again, greatest common factor. What is it? 2 comes out. And we're left with 2Y plus 1. <coughs> so if you are good, at all of this factoring, you're going to get lots of use out of that skill that you have. If you are bad at this factoring, then it's going to come back to haunt you here because you won't have a chance to tell me whether or not you're good at fractions because being good at fractions relies on being good at this factoring. Okay, looking for things that we can cancel. What do you see? First, looking for stuff that's exactly the same. 2y plus 1. Right there. What's right there? Again, in my mind, this is just one big fraction going straight across, so I'm not worried about keeping those fractions separate. Any numerator with any denominator. Okay, anything else exactly the same? Is y minus 2 exactly the same? All right, so an area is looking at y minus 2 and 2 minus y. Are they exactly the same? No. The only other chance for us is that pattern where they're both subtract and they're in different orders. Is that what we have here? It's exactly this pattern, y minus 2 and 2 minus y. So absolutely, we cancel them, but we pay for it. Cross off, we cross off. We replace either one of them with a negative 1. Cross them off. It is just equal to negative 1. You're not, putting, you're not replacing both of them with negative 1, because if you put a negative 1 on top and a negative 1 on the bottom, what have you really accomplished? nothing because that's a positive one right ultimately it needs to be a negative one so it is just a single negative one either the top or the bottom or honestly more commonly we put it just in the front so i'm just going to write my final answer here equals i'm going to put my negative one all the way in the front put a big old fraction just carefully copying what's still there 2y minus 1 times y and downstairs 2 plus y times 2. It's okay to multiply all that stuff back together, but honestly, it's not required. Factored form has many benefits over the multiplied version. But you can if you want. You could multiply. What you absolutely can't do is cancel, because nothing left here is cancelable. Any questions on that? Okay, as you move on to the next page, I need to correct two typos real quick. On the top of the next page, this guy right here that says x equals 2 should have said x equals negative 2. Same thing in the table there. Middle column says x equals 2 should be x equals negative 2. Everybody made those two changes. And then one other typo, everybody has that one, is down here, number 3a. At the bottom, it says minus 10. Everybody see it? Make it a plus 10. 3a in the bottom should be plus 10 instead of minus 10. All right? Okay, so start with that table. You will be introduced to a brand new vocabulary word. Let's see how far we can get here. <laughs> 